If I told you there's a bear out there that can stand over 10 feet tall and weigh more than a grand piano, most people would probably guess a polar bear, and fair enough. Polar bears are huge, but there's another bear living on a handful of remote Alaskan islands that's just as massive and arguably even more impressive. The Kodiak Bear These giants are a subspecies of the brown bear, but they've taken size to a whole new level. And here's the weird part, they didn't evolve in some harsh tundra or extreme landscape. They got that big on an island. Let's clear up one thing right away. Kodiak bears aren't some weird mutant species or prehistoric throwback. They're technically just brown bears, like grizzlies. But over thousands of years, the Kodiak bear, or Ursus arctos middendorfi, if you want to get nerdy, evolved into its own heavyweight champion. These bears live exclusively on the Kodiak Archipelago in Alaska. That's a group of islands off the southern coast of the state, kind of tucked away from the rest of the world. And because they've been isolated there for around 12,000 years, ever since the last ice age ended, they've had a long time to do their own thing. And by doing their own thing, I mean get absolutely massive. Male Kodiak bears routinely weigh over 1,000 pounds. The biggest ones can tip the scales at 1,500 pounds or more. And we're talking fat and muscle weight, not some bloated post-hibernation fluff. When standing on their hind legs, they can reach up to 10 feet tall. That's an NBA center, plus grizzly rage. Now here's the cool part, they're not even the most aggressive bear. Kodiak bears are actually known for being relatively chill, at least compared to their mainland grizzly cousins. So even though they're technically brown bears, Kodiaks have developed their own identity, bigger, bulkier, and built for island domination. So how exactly do you turn a regular brown bear into one of the biggest land predators on the planet? It turns out, you don't need some freak genetic mutation or a radioactive salmon. You just need time, isolation, a buffet of food, and zero competition. Kodiak bears have been living on the Kodiak Archipelago since around the end of the last ice age, over 12,000 years ago. When the glaciers receded, sea levels rose and the land connecting the islands to the mainland disappeared. The bears that were already on those islands? Trapped. No way in, no way out. That kind of isolation is gold for evolution, with no new genes coming in and no predators or rival carnivores to compete with. The Kodiak bears basically had the whole island to themselves. That allowed certain traits, like bigger body size, to become more common over time, especially if those traits helped them survive and thrive. It's a weird twist on a phenomenon called island gigantism, where animals get larger in isolated environments. You usually hear about it with tortoises or rats, but in the case of Kodiak bears, it's like evolution hit the bulk up button and never let go. Now let's talk food. Kodiak Island isn't just scenic, it's loaded with resources. The main jackpot? Salmon. Every year, millions of salmon flood the rivers and streams around the islands, giving bears a high-fat, high-protein feast that's basically a bodybuilder's dream diet. Kodiak bears don't have to go on long, exhausting hunts like big cats or wolves. They just stand in a river and scoop dinner out of the water. But it's not just salmon. The islands also have berries, vegetation, carrion from marine animals, even clams and seaweed in coastal areas. It's like the bears have access to multiple restaurant menus at once, and no one's competing for the last table. With so much food, bigger bears had an advantage. They could store more fat for winter, survive longer hibernations, and power through seasons when food was scarce. That's a huge evolutionary pressure, literally. In a land of plenty, bigger equals better odds of survival. On the mainland, brown bears have to deal with all kinds of rivals, wolves mountain lions, even other bears. That forces them to stay sharp, stay mobile, and often stay leaner just to keep moving and competing. On Kodiak Island? None of that. Kodiak bears are the apex predators. No wolves, no big cats, and the only thing they really have to deal with is each other. Which does lead to some serious dominance battles, especially during salmon season. But generally, the lack of large carnivore competition means they can afford to focus on growing, not fighting for scraps. 
they also don't need to cover as much ground. On the mainland, a grizzly might patrol hundreds of square kilometers. On Kodiak, food is so concentrated that bears can thrive in smaller ranges, meaning they can put more energy into growth and fat storage instead of constant movement. Let's not forget hibernation. Kodiak bears, like other brown bears, hibernate for up to seven to eight months in colder years. That's nearly two-thirds of the year spent living off body fat. And guess who survives hibernation best? The ones with more body to burn. Larger bears can store more fat, maintain higher body temperatures, and survive longer with no food or water. If a small bear runs out of energy reserves in February, it's game over. But a bear that packed on the pounds in salmon season? He's sleeping easy till spring. So, over thousands of years, natural selection favored the beefiest bears, the ones who could eat the most, store the most, and sleep the longest. The result? Kodiak bears became the heavyweight champs of the bear world. Because the Kodiak bear population is relatively isolated, there's also a bit of genetic drift at play. That's when certain traits become more common in a small population just by chance. And when the environment also favors those traits, like larger size, it creates a feedback loop. Over generations, the genes for big size stuck around and became dominant. Kodiak bears today are genetically distant from mainland grizzlies, even though they share the same origin. It's like they've been living in their own evolutionary time capsule, and the big bear blueprint just kept getting reinforced. All right, so we know how Kodiak bears got so big, but here's the real question. Are they still changing? Is evolution still tweaking this island giant? Or have Kodiak bears hit their final form? Short answer? Yes, they're still evolving. Everything alive is. But the changes are subtle, and they're not always in the bigger equals better direction anymore. Evolution isn't about hitting a perfect design and stopping. It's a constant arms race between the animal's traits and the environment it lives in. And Kodiak Island is challenging. Climate patterns are shifting. Summers are getting warmer. Salmon runs are becoming less predictable. And some rivers are drying up earlier than they used to. That means Kodiak bears might need to adapt their diet, their behavior, or even their hibernation cycles. Some already are. Researchers have noticed more bears spending time on coastlines scavenging for marine life or digging up shellfish when salmon is scarce the kind that could slowly reshape their physical traits over generations, like changes in paw strength or tooth wear patterns. Here's the twist. While being big gave Kodiak bears an advantage for centuries, it could become a burden if food becomes inconsistent. Big animals need big energy. If salmon numbers keep fluctuating, being enormous might actually be a disadvantage. That means smaller, more energy-efficient bears could start surviving better in tough years. And if that trend keeps up, Kodiak bears might slowly start trending down in size over the next few thousand years. It wouldn't happen overnight, and they're not about to shrink to raccoon size. But evolution could nudge them in a new direction if the island's resources no longer support giants the way they used to. Another factor? Us. Like it or not, human influence affects evolution. While hunting of Kodiak bears is tightly regulated, there's still contact, especially near villages or fishing areas. Bears that are less aggressive, more tolerant of human activity, or good at scavenging from fishing camps might start doing better than more traditional, remote forest bears. That creates a weird kind of selective pressure, one based not on just survival in nature, but on surviving alongside people. And on top of that, conservationists and biologists are always monitoring the genetic health of the population. If numbers get too low, or inbreeding becomes a problem, they may intervene. That means Kodiak bear evolution might one day be influenced not just by nature, but by science. Some scientists already consider Kodiak bears different enough to be their own subspecies. But if environmental pressures continue to shape them in new ways, different diet, altered size, new behaviors, it's possible they'll drift even further from mainland brown bears. Give it another 10,000 years and you might be looking at something that's not just a big brown bear, but something even more distinct. Maybe not a whole new species, but close. So yeah, Kodiak bears didn't get huge by accident. They had the perfect setup, an isolated island, 
no predators, more salmon than they could ever eat, and just enough time for nature to go full bodybuilder mode. They're not prehistoric. They're not polar bears. They're just regular brown bears, taken to the absolute limit. But what's wild is that their story isn't over. They're evolving, adapting, and maybe even starting to change in new directions. Will they stay giants forever? Maybe. Or maybe Kodiak bears a thousand years from now will be completely different from what we know today. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.